to Whistle Thicket Farmstead. We are talking about our fainting goats today. A lot of people have asked us what are fainting goats and why do they faint? So we are going to tell you a little history about fainting goats. They are also called stiff-legged goats. They're called the Tennessee meat goat, the wooden leg goat, the Texas meat goat, and they are a rare heritage breed. They were first found in the late 1800s in Tennessee, which is right across the border from where we live. We actually got our small herd from Tennessee, so maybe there's a chance that those four goats, um, their ancestors never left the state of Tennessee. So in the 1800s, there were four goats that fainted. They don't actually faint. What it is, it's a genetic disorder. And the main cause of it isn't fainting. The goats are 100% conscious when they faint. But instead of fainting, if they get nervous, if they get scared, sometimes if they get really excited and really happy, they can um, faint. But again, it's not fainting. Their muscles will stiffen up. They become rigid like Roan is demonstrating. They are fully conscious 100%. And they are now a rare heritage breed. They are a meat goat originally but they are bred not only for meat but they are bred as a novelty goat which is why we have them we don't use our goats for meat they are just uh friends on the farm like any breed of goat there are some advantages and also some disadvantages to the fainting goat also known as the myotonic goat the first is that they faint, which can be an advantage, it can be a negative for the goat. Um, since they are fainting goats, they do not climb fences like some other breed of goats. So you don't need a super high fence to keep them in. They are also not as rambunctious as other goats because these goats know that they faint. A, um, few, um, I guess, benefits of the fainting goat. They are used as a meat goat, and they are valued as a meat goat. Uh, the main reason for that is that since they twitch a lot like this, they actually have extra muscles than most goats. So they are a shorter breed goat. They're about a um, medium-sized goat, but they can be very wide and very muscular because they're always twitching, so their muscles get an extra workout. The um, typical color is black and white, but they can be in a variety of colors. And most fainting goats tend to have medium to long hair, which also makes them a great breed for the mountains. We love our fainting goats, right, Ro? Um, we do take our goats on hikes, which that's a blast. A lot of people say you can't take a fainting goat on a hike, but we have proof that they are great on the trail. And eventually, we will make a video of us hiking with our goats. So Rowan is going to tell you about our small herd. And then we are going to introduce you to our goat friends. So our goat's names are Nero, Romeo, and Oga. And um, we used to have a baby goat, but we sold her. She was really cute. She was black and white, and her horns were only this long, but when she was first born, they were, like, that big. And I was the first one to see her, and so I was just, like, um, I just saw her, and it was, like, this light from the sun just went, oh. It was so crazy, and um, I just saw the sun shine on her, and um, I was, like, I didn't even know if she was real. It was so so crazy and so um, I just took a closer look and I saw her I was like whoa that is amazing and so that's pretty much the story of how we found our baby goat um, I was like the first one to ever see her besides her goat parents maybe a few bugs 
but first human and it um so that's pretty much just the story of our baby goat um we got all of our goats from a, a goat breeder and it was a wedding gift for my parents but it was like a family gift too so they're half mine um and so they we just came home and they were like we have a surprise and so then we went into this pen that we yeah we just went into a pen and boom there was goats with our uh pig Stella. so this beautiful boy is nero as you can see he has the classic features of a fainting goat he's black and white he's medium hair um his fur his hair and a coat they do look a little dingy right now but that's because he's shedding his winter coat so that's another reason that he's a great mountain goat is that when it does get cold these goats are able to be out in, in uh, the snow with no problem he is a male goat again and he is a weather goat or a weather goat which means that he was neutered the reason he was neutered is so that of course he doesn't breed but he also is able to be a friend goat with any other goat in our small herd so you want to keep goats as a herd or close to each other goats are social animals they do not like to be by themselves if they are by themselves then they will be making a lot of noise and most importantly they won't be happy they like to be with the herd they like to be with their family since he is a weathered male he's kind of a bigger boy they tend to be a little bit heavier since he doesn't mate and he doesn't have the same hormones as a male he kind of gets a little fat and he actually has features that are more similar to a a female goat so we are going to show you our buck next um his name is romeo and he is a beautiful goat ro would you agree so let's go get romeo and we'll show you him i'd like to introduce everyone to romeo he is our male goat he is a buck which means he is not neutered you only really want to have a buck if you're planning on starting your own breeding program he is a um, registered buck which means that he shows all of the qualities for this heritage breed if you're not sure what a heritage breed is you should go to the website for the livestock conservancy and a heritage breed is basically a breed that is no longer used in the commercial industry we have a lot of factory farming. We have lost a lot of genetic diversity from factory farming. And when farming was a way of life and homesteading was a necessity, we had a lot of different breeds that were bred for different reasons, for meat quality, for milk quantity and quality, for the hair products of goats and sheep and other breeds. But now that we have factory farming, a lot of these breeds have fallen out of favor. But if you want to have a rare breed, and if you want to keep a breed going, I definitely suggest going to the Livestock Conservancy. We have several breeds that we found through this awesome website. As um, you may notice, he is a buck. so. He looks quite a bit different from the first goat we showed you, Nero, who is a weathered male. So this is what a buck looks like as opposed to a weathered male. I think we'll do a video just on the major differences. But as you can see, he, he has a great set of horns on him. They're just beautiful. You do need to take a little extra safety if you have um, your horned goats. But we think it's worth it. Um, He's just a fun part of our uh, farmstead family. So the last goat we're going to show you is Olga. And I think Rowan is going to talk about Olga.
it's uh, me again. Sorry about the chickens. They're being loud and laying an egg. But this is Oga. She's probably my favorite because she can have babies. And um, I think she's pregnant right now because her belly is starting to grow more. So thanks for watching. That was our herd of fainting goats. If you were hoping to see the goats faint in this video, I don't want to disappoint you, but it's not happening in this video. The goats do faint, but we're not going to make them faint on purpose. But eventually, we will share some fainting footage. It happens probably once a day, at least one of the goats will faint. So as soon as we catch it on camera, we will be sure to share it with you. And we just want to say thanks for tuning in, and we will see you in the next video.